As you probably already know, one of the ways that you can improve the playability of a guitar and help improve sustain is to fabricate your own nut for that specific guitar. And in uh, videos that I posted recently, I showed you how to establish the basic shape of the nut as well as how to space the strings. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to actually slot this nut and get the action set up just perfectly from the first fret all the way to the end of the fretboard. So let me bring you in closer and I'll show you how I do this. The first thing I have to do is tune the slack out of the strings. They don't have to be tuned to pitch. They just need to be taut. Next, I'll grab a notched straight edge and I'll use that to check and make sure that the fretboard is absolutely flat. I don't want any relief on this. If the fretboard isn't level, I'll adjust the truss rod until it is. Next, I'm going to set the string action at the 12th fret. And what the string action is, is the distance between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. And to increase or decrease the action, I need to raise the saddles of the bridge. If this was a tunematic bridge, I'd raise the entire bridge itself. Now to measure the string action, I'm going to use a handy string action gauge. And on the side of the gauge, it has graduations that are marked at 64 fourths of an inch. And all I have to do is place that on the 12th fret and check to see where the bottom of the string is in relation to the gauge. And then I can raise and lower the saddles until I get the bottom of the string exactly where I want it to be. And in this case, what I'm going to be trying to achieve is 6 64ths of an inch string action on the bass strings and then 4 64ths of an inch on the treble strings. Now those measurements are actually slightly more than what I will want for the final action. However, I have to take into consideration that I haven't cut the slots yet for the, for the strings in the nut. So the strings are actually sitting too high. And what I'm going to want to do is add a 64th of an inch so that as I slot the, the nut and bring those strings down, the strings will get lower at the 12th fret. And ultimately what I want to achieve is a string action of roughly uh, 5 64ths of an inch at the 12th fret on the bass strings and then 3 64ths of an inch at the 12th fret on the treble strings. Now the tool that I'm going to use to slot the nut are Stumac nut files and you can actually purchase nut slotting files from a bunch of different locations and I'll, I'll try to put some links down in the description below. But I have a collection of different size files and there each one is a different gauge which matches the different gauge strings that I use on my guitars. Now in this case I'm using 10 gauge strings on this guitar. So it's a uh, the high E string is a 10 gauge string then it moves up to 13, 17, uh, 26, 36, and 46. Now the problem is, is you can't always find the exact gauge file for a specific gauge string, so you just have to try to come close. Now as luck would have it, my high E string is a 10 gauge, and I just happen to have a 10 gauge file for that, so that's what I'm going to be using to cut this first slot into the nut. A while back I had posted up a video where I sh uh, demonstrated how I established the string spacing on the nut before cutting the slots and I had used a very small fret saw to cut a shallow notch for each string into the top of the nut and that shallow notch sort of acts as a placekeeper to hold the string in position and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that shallow notch to start my slot. So I'll place the file into that little notch and I'll just begin filing back and forth gradually forming the, uh, the slot. Now in the episode that I posted where I talked about the shape 
of the slot. I had mentioned that it should be ever so slightly wider than the string itself. So to accomplish that, what I like to do is I like to angle the file as I'm filing the, uh, the slot. And as you watch here, you can see I'm moving it from side to side. And that will make the slot ever so slightly wider than the string itself. And that reduces the amount of contact between the nut and the string. The key here is to gradually creep up on the final depth. So what I will do every so often as I'm cutting the slot is I'll put the string back into the slot and I will check the height over the first fret. And the way I like to do this is to use a feeler gauge and I will slide that in under the string and over the top of the fret. And the uh, specific feeler gauge size that I use in this case is a uh, 0 0.010 inch uh, feeler. And I'll just slide that in underneath the string and just over the top of the fret. And then I'll press the string down. And my goal is to get it to a point where the, uh, the gauge slides snugly between the, uh, the top of the fret and the bottom of the string. And so I'll just continue to file until I get the string down uh, pretty close to that final depth. Now, in truth, what I want to do is I want to stop just short of the string touching the top of that feeler gauge. That way I can st uh, start working on generating some fall off in the bottom of the slot. And as I do that, the final depth will automatically be achieved. So the approach that I'll use is to simply angle the file downward towards the tuners as I'm sawing back and forth and, and shaping the bottom of that slot. As I had said in a previous episode about shaping the nut slot, you want that fall away to help reduce weird uh, tones as well as improve sustain. And a way to check your progress on fall off is to put the string back in and then where the string exits the nut and heads towards the tuner, you should be able to press the string up and down and there should be a little bit of play back there indicating that the, the bottom of the slot is not touching the bottom of the string. So I'll just continue to carve the bottom of the slot at, a, at, a, at an angle, gradually rounding it over to the face. And I'll pop that string back into place, make sure that my action is where I want it, and make sure I have a little bit of play on the tuner side of the nut. And then I'll just progress to each string using the exact same technique until I have all six slots cut. Now, one thing I should mention, uh, you'll notice with this nut, the uh, slots are cut straight through the nut. And that's because I have a straight pull from the nut to the tuners. And that's something I always try to, uh, to accomplish with all my guitars, is I like a straight string pull. It means less binding, less uh, tuning issues, uh, better sustain, you know, all those good things. So what I'll do is I'll aim my file to the side of the tuning post that the string will come in contact with as it wraps around. Now, if by chance I have, you know, because of the design of the headstock to angle the strings to the tuning posts, I would then angle my file to match. So I'd be aiming it at the tuning post on the side or to the side that the string will come in contact as it wraps around the post.
Now, in the video where I had talked about the shape of the slots, I had mentioned that you really want to have uh, about half of the string proud of the top of the, the nut itself. And as you can see here, the strings go pretty far down into the nut, especially on the treble side. The bass side isn't as bad, but on the treble side it does. That's because I haven't done the final shaping of the top of the nut. So what I'll do is I'll remove the nut from the neck, and I'm going to take it to my sander, and I will sand down the top so that the top half of the strings will be uh, just above or sticking out of the top of the nut. That's not as important to do with the treble strings, but you do want to do that with the bass strings. If you make your own nut and slot it yourself, you can really dial in the performance of your guitar in terms of playability, sustain, tone, everything. So I highly encourage you invest in some nut files and give it a shot. So hopefully you found this episode to be useful. And if so, give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button if you don't already subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. All those good things. And I will see you soon.